Youth, a time for daring adventures and testing boundaries. The playground was abandoned, forgotten, and was the eerie corner of our town. Little did we know we were on the edge of a nightmare. One night, our recklessness would give us a stark reminder that some doors are best left unopened. The asylum we found was a decaying facade, a testament to years of neglect and whispered horrors. We were a mixed bag of bravado and trepidation that night. The guys joked about ghosts, their laughter echoing unnaturally. The girls clung together, seeking comfort in numbers. I was somewhere in between, the dare tugging at my pride. The iron gates in front of the asylum stood before us, its broken windows like vacant eyes. We had crossed the point of no return. The sun had just gone down, casting long, eerie shadows across the overgrown lawn. The asylum, now shrouded in darkness, felt more menacing. The wind picked up, whistling through the gaps in the decaying structure. Our laughter from moments before had died, replaced by an unnerving silence. As we neared the main entrance, a sense of foreboding washed over me. I paused, my hand hovering over the rusted doorknob. The others urged me on, their words distant, muffled. I took a deep breath and pushed open the heavy door. The air inside was stagnant, thick with the smell of decay and dust. We fumbled for our flashlights, finally getting them on, we could see dust hanging in the beams of light. The air inside was thick with the smell of decay, dust motes dancing in the weak beams of our flashlights. The silence was unnerving, broken only by the sound of our own breathing. Each step was an effort, as if the asylum itself was trying to push us back. We moved cautiously through the main hallway, our flashlights cutting through the oppressive darkness. Restraints lay discarded on the floor, a chilling reminder of the asylum's troubled past. The walls were adorned with peeling wallpaper and disturbing graffiti. The air grew colder as we descended deeper into the asylum. It felt deliberate, as if we were being watched. Despite the growing unease, we pressed on, drawn deeper into the asylum's web of darkness. Our photographer, Jake, the daredevil of the group, seemed unfazed by the oppressive atmosphere. He saw beauty in the decay, framing shots with an artist's eye. Each click of the camera shutter seemed to pierce an echo in the silence. Over there, by the window, Jake instructed. Let's get a shot of you guys with the moonlight streaming in. We shuffled into position. The moonlight cast an eerie glow on our faces, making us look like ghosts. Click. The shutter snapped, capturing the moment in time. Jake stopped before a wall, its surface covered in scratches and scribbles. Get out, it read, the words scrawled in a desperate hand. The air grew noticeably colder. A chill settled over us, penetrating our jackets. I could see my breath now, forming wispy clouds in the freezing air. It felt like a warning, a sign that we had overstayed our welcome. Did you guys feel that? Emily whispered, her voice trembling. We huddled closer, seeking comfort in each other's presence. The shadows seemed to deepen, stretching and contorting in the corners of our vision. Maybe we should head back, I suggested my voice betraying my growing unease. The others agreed immediately. Even Jake seemed hesitant to argue. Click, click, we began to retrace our steps, our pace quickening. The asylum seemed to resist our departure, the air growing heavier. Our footsteps echoed in the silence, the only sound other than our ragged breathing. Click, click, the sound of a camera shutter echoed through the hallway. We stopped dead in our tracks, our blood turning to ice. Jake, was that you? I whispered. He shook his head, his face pale. No, my camera's around my neck, he said, his voice tight with fear. We were not alone. Someone or something was watching us. Let's get out of here, I hissed. We broke into a run, our flashlights bouncing wildly. The air seemed to crackle with energy, a palpable sense of malice pressing down on us. The exit seemed miles away, the hallway stretching on endlessly before us. We burst back into the main hall, our chests heaving. The exit, the rusted iron gate that stood between us and freedom, was in sight. But as we stumbled towards it, our hope turned to ash. Standing in the doorway, silhouetted against the pale moonlight, was a figure, tall and gaunt, with long, sharp fingers. Jake, his photographer's instincts taking over, raised his camera. 
The flash exploded in the darkness, momentarily illuminating the figure. The figure, its face twisted in a rictus of rage, lunged towards us. We didn't wait to see what the creature would do next. Adrenaline surged through our veins as we fled. We didn't dare look back, the image of the creature's twisted visage seared into our minds. The heavy thud of its footsteps echoed behind us. We burst through the rusted iron gates, the cool night air a welcome relief. We didn't stop running until we reached the relative safety of the tree line. We huddled together, gasping for breath, our eyes wide with fear. We had escaped with our lives, but the experience had left an indelible mark on our souls. We never spoke of that night again. Looking back, I realize we were incredibly foolish. We had ignored the warning signs, the feeling of unease. That night taught us a valuable, albeit terrifying lesson. Always trust your gut. Our intuition is a powerful force, a primal instinct that has kept humanity safe for millennia. We may have escaped the asylum that night, but we didn't escape unscathed. The experience changed us, instilled in us a healthy respect for the unknown. We learned that some mysteries are best left unsolved, some doors best left unopened. 